Hi, it's Iman. In this video, I'll cover the redundancy factor in seismic design and how to check it. Let's get to it. All right, the redundancy factor is actually closely related to the concept of uh, structural indeterminacy. Okay, uh, let's look at two frames over here. From structural analysis, we know that the degree of indeterminacy of frame A is greater than of frame B. Okay. Um, assume these two frames have the same stiffness and strength. Uh, in frame A, strength and stiffness are provided by two braced bays in each story. And during an earthquake event, if one of the braces fails, the other brace will still maintain the stability of a structure um, and prevent overall collapse. Okay? However, in frame B, if an earthquake causes the single brace bay in a story to fail, that story will no longer have any lateral load resisting elements and the structural uh, will become unstable. Okay, so uh, by definition, a structure with a high degree of indeterminacy is one where the seismic load in the x or y direction um, is resisted by multiple components, like several moment frames, brace frames, or shear walls, uh, such that if one of these components is lost, the structure can still maintain much of its uh, strength. Okay. Um, so, in general, the greater the number of lateral resisting elements in a structure, the higher its indeterminacy or redundancy will be, uh, resulting in improved seismic performance and better behavior at the moment of failure, uh, which <laughs> makes our structure happier, right? Um, so. ASCE 7 introduces redundancy factor or row factor as a penalty to increase seismic design forces, where in the structures without multiple load resisting path. Okay. Um, now, from ASCE 7, for structures in seismic design category B or C, row is always 1. But in categories D, E, and F, the default is 1.3 unless you pass a certain test, uh, a configuration test or a calculation test. Um, so if you pass either one, you're good to use one instead of uh, 1.3, okay? Condition A or the calculation test checks if any story resists more than 35% of the base shear in that direction and then applies the rules in this table to see if removing one element would cause excessive strength loss or extreme torsional irregularity. Okay. And item B, the configuration test, um, is much simpler. Your structure must be regular in plan and you need at least two lateral bays on each side of the center of mass at every story that resists more than 35% of the base shear, okay? Again, item A is harder to verify, and it's um, usually done with design software programs like uh, ETABS or SAP or whatever you're using. So uh, that's why we almost always start with condition B. Um, if you pass it, you're done, period. Um, you can take row equals one, without even touching condition A. Okay. All right. Uh, let's walk through an example real quick. Here is a four-story frame with the lateral load distribution at each level. Um, using the sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero, we can calculate the story shear. Okay. Um, any story resisting more than 35% of the base shear needs to be checked for redundancy, right? Um, here, the first, second, and third stories all exceed 35% of uh, base shear. So uh, redundancy must be checked for those stories, okay? Now, uh, looking at plan views, uh, we have two cases, case one and case two. Um, condition B says in each direction, the lateral, sorry, the structure must have at least two lateral bays on each side of the center of mass for all the stories exceeding that 35% limit, 
okay so uh, looking at the top plan case one um, assume the earthquake is acting in the x direction so basically the walls parallel to the x direction resists the seismic load okay and we have shear walls on each side of the center of mass okay we typically call the span between columns a bay but in the cases of in the case of shear walls the code has its own specific definition of a bay uh, so to find the number of bays um, when you have a shear wall just take the length of the shear wall and divide it by the story height so in this example it's 25 feet over 12 feet which equals 2.08 uh, which is greater than 2 okay in the second case there's only one brace bay on each side of the center of mass uh, that fails the requirement basically so clause B is not satisfied and uh, we must check clause A so to do this one of the brace frames must be removed in each story under different load combinations and story levels um, to evaluate the change in lateral shear resistance um, the goal is basically to assess the potential for extreme torsional irregularity and verify whether a new irregular condition is, in, is introduced uh, when one brace is removed okay uh, and again this type of check must practically be performed using structural analysis software okay all right now let's go over a few important notes that you need to keep in mind when you applying uh, the redundancy factor in your designs okay first you can always just take row equals 1.3 without doing any verification in either direction uh, well <laughs> that's okay but it's not recommended uh, why because it's overly conservative um, and you'll end up with a heavier design and that's not the intent of ASCE 7 right second uh, if you're using clause A or the calculation test you can apply row factor independently in each direction for example you might have row equals 1 in the x direction and row equals 1.3 in the y direction uh, depending on the results right next if the structure in its own in its original configuration uh, meaning without removing any elements uh, this structure if uh, already has extreme torsional irregularity then row equals 1.3 period no further checks are needed you just take 1.3 right away okay now uh, let's talk about height to length ratios for shear walls and wall piers because these come into play when you're doing the redundancy factor checks right um, in this picture you can see how we define the height and length for shear walls and wall piers okay uh, also AC7 says for light frame construction such as wood panels the number of bays is calculated as twice the wall length divided by story height okay next in general when we're figuring out a building's redundancy factor there are two big things to keep in mind first the location of the seismic force resisting systems along the perimeter of the building and second the effect of removing portions of the frames okay um, looking at this plan view while it may seem that there are enough bays in the x direction on each side of uh, the center of mass the problem is that the north walls are not located on the building's perimeter and this violates the requirement and uh, you know as a result we must take row equals 1.3 okay next um, ASC 7 lists the cases where we're allowed to take row as one uh, without any additional checks okay uh, this includes things like structurals in seismic category B or C 
that I mentioned earlier, uh, drift calculations and p delta effects, non-structural components, non-building structures, uh, collector and connection design when over strength is already considered, um, diaphragm load calculations, structures with damping systems, and out of plane wall design, uh, including anchorage. So in these cases, rho equals one is automatic. Okay. Next, uh, this is really important. Uh, so if we find that rho equals 1.3 applies in a direction, the code says we must apply that factor 1.3 to all elements resisting seismic forces in that direction uh, from the very bottom of the structure to the top. Okay. For example, in this frame, the first, second, and third stories have a story shears above 35% uh, of base shear. So uh, we check their plan views. Uh, let's say in the plan view for these stories, the lateral frames don't meet the redundancy requirements, uh, which means rho equals 1.3 applies in this direction. Okay. Now, here is the key point. Even the fourth story where the story shear is less than 35% of shear uh, of base shear will still have rho equals 1.3 applied to all their beams elements braces shear walls and connections in that direction okay so uh, once you trigger rho equals 1.3 for a direction uh, basically it's not a story by story factor it's a direction wide factor applied to the entire lateral system in that direction okay so again we use that 35 percent limit only to identify the candidate stories so basically we want to know which stories need to have their plan regularity checked um, after reviewing those stories if we determine that the row factor is 1.3 then this factor must be applied to all lateral force resisting elements in that direction for all stories from the bottom to the top. All right, that's it for today. Uh, in the next videos, I will jump into uh, condition A, the calculation test, and I'll walk you through how to apply it in ETABs for uh, different structural systems. Okay, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks.